I'm Elisa White. I am a hydrology graduate student, so I did my master's here as well, and I'm a first year PhD student. I grew up in a tiny little place in northeastern North Carolina, like a very tiny place. I'm like an hour and a half inland of the Outer Banks, so I'm kind of in the swamp. But it's a great place. It was a great place to grow up, and there's not that much to do in terms of um, like you're not going to the movies or you're not going shopping or going to the skating rink or anything like that. Like you don't have those options. So most of what I did growing up was outside. Um, like exploring the woods or building tree houses with my sisters or going fishing, something like that. So I've always been exposed to that and kind of wanted to know as much about it as possible. Just been curious about what's around me because I've interacted with it so much. So I'm interested in water rock interactions as far as like the aqueous geochemistry, it's kind of what you think of hydrogeology. Um, so being able to look at water samples and tell you where whatever chemicals are in that water, where that came from, that sort of thing. And then the hydrobiogeochemistry is the water. Um, bio in terms of like plants is really what I think of it, like nutrients and that sort of thing. And then again, the geochemistry being the water rock interaction type thing. My master's work um, is looking at the effects of uh, forest fires and how they change the chemistry and flux of stem flow and through fall. So stem flow is the water, the precipitation that goes down the stems or the branches of the trees and then down the, um, the trunk and it's actually deposited at the base of the tree. Through fall is what basically comes through the canopy. Say after a wildfire, it's not a high severity fire, so you still have some trees that are standing. Basically, you lost all of your leaf cover for the most part. The grass and the shorter trees, they're burned. Um, and then the taller trees that you have standing, um, they're dead, but maybe haven't fallen over. They didn't completely burn, that type of thing. Um, so in those types of fires, you have those trees that can stand for decades. It just depends on how much they were burned. Um, so they're naturally going to kind of release whatever nutrients they've picked up as the water runs down them, but then when they're burned, are those nutrients changing? Um, so I've found that you get like a lot more calcium and phosphate and that type of thing. Um, so because you don't have any canopy anymore, you've got more water that's interacting with the tree and the ash that's now on that tree. And then it's also picking up more of those solutes, so more of the nutrients and that type of thing. In our, our large group CZO meetings, when we present to like our other CZO scientists, you get asked questions that basically are kind of figuring out how your work relates to theirs and how your work can inform theirs or maybe how you can collaborate with them. And that is, is really interesting. It's really helpful. Um, for me, part of the hardest part of really coming up with your scientific questions and, and figuring out where your research is going to go is, is kind of saying, how do I make this important? Like, if I'm explaining this to someone, why do they care? Why should they care? And the CZR really helps with that. It's usually really fun going up there. It's just, it's a good group of people. It's an amazingly beautiful place. Um, and it just, it feels good to be out there doing the whole part of my research on my own. I mean, obviously I have people that are there helping me, but to be able to decide on my question, to plan it, to get the materials, set it up, collect it, analyze it, just to do the whole thing. I think that's really rewarding. So it's always pretty fun. <laughs>